To make a windshield, they start with a plain sheet of glass. An automated plotter moves a cutting wheel over it and the wheel scores the glass. Now, a robotic arm brandishes a torch. It moves along the score line and the thermal shock completes the cut. This is the best way to cleanly cut through glass. Next, a robot suctions up the cut piece of glass and transfers it to the next station, where it pushes the glass against a series of sanding belts. This takes off the sharp edges. It's called seaming. Now a conveyor belt takes the glass through some soapy water to clean it up. Then nozzles spray the glass with a mix of talcum powder and water. This will prevent the glass from sticking to a second sheet of glass. A robot now sets that second piece of glass on top of the freshly sprayed one. This is a temporary arrangement. The two sheets of glass are layered for processing, but will be pulled apart later. Next, they self-screen black paint around the border of the glass that will eventually be the inner part of the windshield. Then automated arms carry the glass to a station where samples are inspected visually. After that, rollers transfer the glass to automatic squaring pucks, which position them. And then a robot lifts the sheets of glass and carries them to four metal pins. The pins recede and the glass falls onto a bending iron. The iron is shaped like a specific windshield. The conveyor takes the bending iron with the two glass sheets into an oven called a bending lear. The lear heats the glass sheets to 750 degrees Celsius, causing the glass to sink into the shape of the bending iron. Then the glass goes through a slow cooling cycle to anneal or toughen the new shape. Next, a robot picks up a sheet of vinyl cut in the shape of a windshield. It takes the vinyl sheet to one of the newly shaped pieces of glass just separated from the other piece. Then another robot lowers the other identical piece of glass onto the vinyl. And that's the formula for glass lamination. Two layers of glass with a piece of vinyl between them. In the event of an accident, the windshield will fracture but not totally shatter because the vinyl will hold most of the broken glass together. But at this point, there's no clear view through that milky white vinyl. That's why the windshield is headed to a machine called a nipper. The nipper presses the windshield between a series of rubber rollers, squeezing out air pockets in it. As the air is removed, the view through the vinyl gets a bit clearer. Now, squaring pucks position the windshield and a robot sticks brackets for the rear view mirror onto it. This big blue chamber is an autoclave. It's like a pressure cooker. After about an hour in there, any remaining air pockets in the windshield are removed. A rail system transports the tub full of windshields to the inspection station. Here, each windshield undergoes a close-up inspection by a human. He searches for scratches, chips, or any contamination between the glass and vinyl layers. Now, they place a two and a quarter kilogram steel ball into a pulley system that raises it four meters high. Yes, this is a crash test for a sample windshield. The ball represents a driver's head. The ball hits the glass but doesn't go through, which means the windshield has passed this safety test. Now they view the windshield through polarized light, which reveals stress defects but only a trained eye can spot them. Once it's decided that everything looks good, the windshield is ready for the road. And the view from the driver's seat is now as clear as glass.